Hi, my name is Dr. Ross Hausler. I'm Medical Director at Caring Medical and Rehabilitation Services here in Oak Park, Illinois. I have a young athlete here and today I'm going to be demonstrating, you know, what are some of the most common hip conditions that not only young athletes have, but, you know, what we see at Caring Medical. It's very, very common for folks to have anterior hip pain. The most common reason in young people that we see is actually joint instability of the hip. In folks who are over 40, the most common reason that they have anterior hip pain is actually osteoarthritis of the hip. So I just want to kind of help people determine you know, which condition they have and how a person at home could figure out whether or not they're a good prolotherapy candidate. Like obviously this young athlete you know, she has outstanding range of motion. So what I often have folks do is actually do this motion. So if you could just do that motion. So at home, somebody could do this motion. And if they just put their hand here, like this particular young athlete, there's a clicking sound. You know, there's a clicking sound. That's good. So in other words, at home, somebody could do that motion, put your hand here, or have your significant other put their hand here, and there's a clicking sound. Just realize, I mean, the hip joint is a ball and socket. There's not supposed to be some clicking sound. Now, if you go on the internet, that's called snapping hip syndrome. You know, snapping hip, hip syndrome. And what basically is happening is the hip joint's moving too much. Well, when you have symptoms with that, uh, we just call that hip instability. I call that hip instability. The hip joint's moving too much. Even just doing that motion, it's moving too much. So that normally is either th this young athlete or people like that have a ligament injury. Ligaments are just what connect the bones together. In the front here, the main ligament is called the iliofemoral ligament, or this particular person or somebody like them has a labral tear. And just realize labral tears, they're a lot more common than people think. You know, because doctors often don't think of them. You know, the person gets physical therapy, maybe they get a little bit better, but they actually don't get back to their full activities. Because I know this young athlete, you know, likes to run, so she wants to obviously get back to running. So you could see that she had really good motion, she has anterior hip pain, then with external rotation of the hip, there's a clicking sound, there's a clicking sound. So that's hip instability. The best treatment for hip instability is going to be prolotherapy. Prolotherapy injections, when I do it, I don't just do the front of the hip. I do the front of the hip, side of the hip, and the back of the hip. The reason is, come on, if somebody's got the hip joints moving too much here, it's going to be moving too much in the back. So in other words, there's ligaments and structures that stabilize the hip in the front, in the side, in the back. So that's why we do what's called comprehensive prolotherapy. Prolotherapy is going to stimulate the cells to proliferate in the structures that are weak in the joint. So, that, so with prolotherapy, we're stimulating the proliferation of muscle cells, ligament cells, labral cells, cartilage cells. And ultimately what's going to happen is the instability is going to go away and you might say, well, geez, doc, how do you know that? Well, one is you know, the clicking and grinding of the joint either goes down or goes away. But mostly this athlete gets back to running. You know, they get back to running five miles, 10 miles, 15 miles. So if they couldn't do it, then they can do it. Be guaranteed that, you know, the hip joint is a lot, lot stronger and, the, and it's now stable. Now what happens is, this is really the key point. If you go to a physical therapist or even an orthopedic surgeon and you have this, they'll probably say, wow, geez, you got tenderness of your iliopsoas muscle, right? You have, and if they do an ultrasound or they do a scan, they'll say, oh, you got, there's a lot of fluid in there. And guess what they're going to want to do uh, for that extra fluid in there? Whether they call it a bursitis or you got extra joint fluid, they're going to want to do a steroid shot. Well, obviously, I'm anti-steroid shot because the reason that you've got the extra fluid in there is the body's trying to stabilize the joint. When you have hip joint instability, the body basically has three mechanisms itself to stabilize the joint. One is it can contract the muscles. So obviously, if you have instability here of the hip, what muscle is it going to recruit to stabilize the joint? It's going to recruit the iliopsoas muscle. So if you have chronic iliopsoas spasm, 
and you have to, you're a runner and you have to keep stretching your iliopsoas muscle and you got to do the roller and you keep getting massages and it's not going away, it's probably not a tight iliopsoas muscle. It's probably that the iliopsoas muscle is getting tight because you have underlying joint instability. So the treatment should be not chronic iliopsoas stretching, it should be prolotherapy. Prolotherapy to the hip joint will stabilize the hip joint. Once the hip joint's stable, then the muscle relaxes. Like we don't have our clients like, oh, get, do a bunch of massage and do a whole bunch of stretching. All you gotta do is resolve the issue. All you have to do is resolve the issue, then the muscle relaxes, then you feel fine. Now, the other mechanism that the body has to stabilize the joint is to put extra fluid in the joint. I'm not saying the person doesn't have extra fluid in there, like they show it under ultrasound. I just think the wrong treatment is to do a steroid shot. In other words, the body's inflaming that area to try to stabilize it. It's trying to stabilize it. So that swelling in there is actually the body's mechanism to stabilize that joint because you have an underlying labral tear or you have a ligament injury. So doing a steroid shot and for this young runner then to feel good after the steroid shot and then to go running on an unstable hip joint, they're going to get more injury. They're going to get more injury. They're going to get, it's going to get worse. That's why the problem keeps coming back and they need more steroid shots, more anti-inflammatories and ultimately they end up with surgery. So if an athlete doesn't want to have surgery, don't do the steroid shot into the bursa or the joint, get prolotherapy and just resolve it. Then it gets resolved, the problem gets resolved. One of the reasons why I like prolotherapy is it doesn't cover up the problem. It uh, gets rid of the cause of the problem. I mean, it gets at the root cause of the problem. You know, as an athlete, I don't want to cover up the problem. Right, this athlete who's got anterior hip pain, they could just take narcotic medications. Like just take Oxycontin. That's gonna get rid of your pain but that doesn't get at the root cause of the problem. You're just gonna make yourself worse. What you need to do is stabilize the joint, stabilize the joint. Now, to diagnose a labral tear, if somebody wanted to diagnose it, you know, you could get an MRI arthrogram. Just realize that's a several thousand dollar test and you don't need that to get better from prolotherapy. I mean, you know, there's an, I mean, obviously if you got clicking, grinding, popping of the joint with external rotation, you know, you got hip instability. With prolotherapy, I don't need to know specifically you got a labral tear, you got a ligament injury. I just need to know that you got hip instability and you need prolotherapy for the joint. So prolotherapy works great for hip instability. So we talked about tight iliopsoas. We talked about a labral tear. We talked about ligament injury. Now, when you have hip arthritis, like when, when is it hip arthritis? So with hip arthritis, Pretty much the first thing that goes is internal rotation. See how this athlete has a lot of internal rotation? And again, people could do this at home. If you go like this and you notice that, you know, it's hard, it's hard to push this way. Like it's hard to do this uh, motion. This is called internal rotation. And then the per you get a sharp pain there. So say somebody, you go like this and you go like that and then you get a sharp pain there. That's basically two conditions. You either, you, you do have hip osteoarthritis, but you also might have femoral acetabular impingement. Okay, femoral acetabular impingement. So impingement means that boom, two bones are hitting. Boom, boom, boom. Like in other words, you don't have as much internal rotation as the other side. Guess what the cause of femoral acetabular impingement in my opinion is? You know, joint instability, it's joint instability. Like in other words, why are the bones bam, bam, bam? Well, you know, why are they hitting each other? They're mainly hitting each other because there's been an overgrowth of bone. Remember I said there's three things that the body does when you have hip instability. It can recruit muscles to go into spasm, which we showed the iliopsoas. Two is the joint swells. The third thing that happens is you get the overgrowth of bone. And if you research femoral acetabular impingement, you'll see on the internet, there's an overgrowth of bone. The overgrowth of bone is because of why? The body's trying to stabilize the hip because you got underlying hip instability. So the treatment for underlying hip instability should be what? Prolotherapy. Now you can have 
the surgeon, you can have the surgeon, you could spend a lot of money and have them reshape your, your acetabulum, the ball part. They could shave all the bone spurs. Now, is that going to cause your hip to be more stable or more unstable? So guess what we see in the office? We see a lot of clients after these kind of surgeries because now the hip's more unstable. Like in other words, the cause of the, the, the extra bone was because the hip joint was, they had instability. The person had an unstable hip. And the body compensated over the course of several years to overgrow bone. Now you got rid of the overgrowth of bone. Then the athlete's like, geez, I'm not getting back to running. Like I thought I was going to get back to running. So inevitably they need prolotherapy anyway. So why don't you just get prolotherapy to begin with? So uh, the overgrowth of bone is part of the degenerative process. So really by definition, if you have femoral acetabular impingement, you really do have uh, osteoarthritis. Most people don't understand the degenerative or osteoarthritic cascade. So I just want to talk about it really, really briefly because I think this would be really helpful for folks. They've done a lot of detailed studies in humans and animals and basically this is what happens. You first, your first injury that caused the thing was the person had a ligament injury, a ligament injury, then the joint was moving too much like you know this athlete knows that there's a clicking grinding sound so it's it's moving too much that puts additional pressure so instead of when this athlete runs or walks instead of the motion being like this there's like a clicking grinding popping that puts additional pressure plus shear forces onto the labrum so long story short what it then ends up happening is the, the bone underneath the cartilage called the subchondral bone then gets hard or sclerotic. That's why you see these dark areas of white under x-ray. So now when the person runs, the underlying bone underneath the cartilage is too hard. So when the person runs or they walk up and down stairs, there's not cushion underneath the cartilage. So, in a, so it's like bam, 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 bam. Then the cartilage fibrillates or fractures or breaks. Like, so in other words, the cause of the cartilage having little fissures or breaks or fibrillations they're called or loose bodies in the joint is that the underlying bone is too hard so there's not cushion. So that's actually what causes the articular cartilage to de degenerate. The articular cartilage degeneration is ca caused by joint instability. So the treatment isn't like a joint replacement or cartilage implantation. It's repair of the ligaments along with stimulation of articular cartilage repair. So that's why with prolotherapy, sometimes we do regular comprehensive prolotherapy and sometimes we add stem cells. You know, we can get the stem cells from people's fat, their bone marrow, or actually even in, from their blood. Our, in our experience, when somebody's a good candidate for prolotherapy and they have hip arthritis and the doctor's been told they need a hip replacement, the success rate of prolotherapy is around 90%. So, I mean, I, that's like unbelievable. So you have a 90% chance of not needing a hip replacement if you do what we ask you to do, which is a certain amount of prolotherapy sessions and a various exercise program, which often involves cycling. The reason why we have people cycle with hip arthritis is that cycling helps the body make joint fluid and that joint fluid cushions the hip. Uh, now, if somebody wanted to determine whether they're a good candidate for prolotherapy if they have hip arthritis, basically what we look for is can they flex their hip at least to 90 degrees? So if you can flex your hip to 90 degrees, that makes you a good prolotherapy candidate. If you can flex it to 100 degrees, that makes you a very good prolotherapy candidate. If you have 10 degrees of internal rotation of the hip with the hip flexed, that makes you a very good prolotherapy candidate. What we like is that you can at least get your hip joint to neutral. Like if, if people, when they go like this and the hip goes way out here and you can't move it here, Normally, that means that the ball part is all destroyed. Like in other words, the process went on too long and in those cases, you need a hip replacement. So we are getting on film that Dr. Hauser said there are times where you need a hip replacement. So don't say that I never, I don't ever recommend a hip replacement. 
There are times where a person needs a hip replacement. So all you have to do is, you know, do that exam on yourself and look at your x-ray. And if the ball is still a ball, you know, like it's still round, you're probably going to be a good prolotherapy candidate. When you go like this and you can't do any internal rotation, it means that that ball, because of the instability, like say it's a ball, and then it's going bam, bam. Remember, because I said instability, it's because of instability, that's causing the problem. So it's bam, 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 now it's flat. So can prolotherapy take this flat hip and make it round? Of course not. So guess what you need in those situations? You need a hip replacement. But obviously, we would love people come in early, get, er, get it early, because joint instability, this athlete, if she gets her joint instability resolved with prolotherapy, the risk of osteoarthritis is basically zero because you got at the root cause, and then she can run her whole life. Now, if you have any questions about this or anything else on this video or other videos, please feel free to email me at drhauser at caringmedical.com. Thank you for watching.